<laughs> so hi everyone thank you so much for being here this is much appreciated my name is Edgar Spivak and I'm the CEO and the co-founder of Fixel and in this about we'll try to do a 25 30 minute webinar what we'll do we will talk about what's happening now uh, during the coronavirus uh, we will talk what you can do generally and using Fixel. So we will manage to combine it. The goal of this webinar will be to give you hands-on tools that you can have as a Fixel client and some general tips. So the first situation, we were in Israel, um, one of the upside and downside that by managing media for over 20 years here in Israel, we had a lot of wars. And what we're seeing in the way visitors engaging and the, the user behavior, this is very similar to what's happening in the war. And the knowledge that I'm going to share, this is a lot of research, but mainly my own experience when managing media during war, I saw it as a media seller. I saw it when I ran agency. I saw it when I was a freelance consultant with some of the largest brands here. And eventually we see that the patterns of the, the engagement across the web, the, the online patterns are really, really similar to what's happening now. And I want, I will start with, uh, the last sentence that I will finish this presentation. We here for you. We know that you're a Fixel client. Um, I hope uh, some of you I know just are going to be a Fixel client. We're here for you to support you, not only with our uh, platform. We believe in a client. We know this is tough times. And we want to give you the support in order for you to succeed in your campaigns. So feel free to reach out after the webinar. You will have my private web, my private uh, email, my product, our CTO. Any questions you may have, feel free to reach out and we're here for you. We, we thank you for trusting us in those days. And this is much appreciated. And we will focus a bit about e-commerce, but it's happening in, 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 in another, uh, excuse me, in a variety of industries. Um, during the e-commerce specific, we have a lot of problem of supply, a lot of delivery problem. Now being a delivery guy is one of the most requested jobs. And, but the main problem in one world is uncertainty. Is uncertainty means, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I may browse, may not, may buy, may not. The, and but we have a huge opportunity here. The huge opportunity goes that the media prices going down, people don't go out, they spend way, way more time, and we have less noise because others are stop advertising. When we take this business landscape into what happened specifically in the online media, we see some changes. The more online time impacted, we have way more impressions for users. People are clicking more, they're boring. They're way, way more boring. And we're seeing dramatic increase by 30 to 50, sometimes 70% increase in the CPM, the cost per each impression that you're paying. On the other hand, in the crisis mode, we're seeing, um, we don't sure we need it or not. Again, as I said, we have no idea if we're going to have a job tomorrow that we can pay for this great draft. And the impact of this one is a lower conversion rate. By the way, a research that we conducted in Fixel, what we saw, we checked last week when we tried to make a check in the US, comparing um, back then before the lockdown, eventually across all the US, what's happening in, uh, in the four states that get impacted the most with uh, New Jersey, New York, Washington, and California. What was the change in the conversion rate on our client's data? It was minus 50% in those states, in the coronavirus states, versus minus 
uh, in all the rest of US. And it's impacted, we assume they're going to be even more a reduction in the conversion rate, but you have lower CPCs and you still have an opportunity. And this is what we're going to talk because I believe this is a big opportunity. And one more thing that we think is new engagement patterns. It means that the fact that two things are happening here. One is that all the rules that we knew about engagement in our website almost are, became irrelevant. It means that if before we can say, look, all these, uh, the balanced users aren't good, the unbalanced are great. If someone saw three page views, he uh, have a likelihood to buy. And if someone saw, it uh, was two minutes in our site, he's the very, very engaging visitors. What you have to do is almost on a daily basis to recheck all those assumptions and to validate them with data. Because new times, the, the way people engage in your site going to be completely different than what you used to until last week. You have to understand those changes. Don't be surprised. Don't make any assumption. One more problem is that all the uh, AI rules by the ad platform, by Facebook, Google, or by any ad platform, eventually don't, they are, uh, working on past data, and it's really hard for them to optimize the media, as you can see now. A bit short explanation about what is Fixel and a bit about the tech that's going behind our platform. Eventually, what we're doing for you, you have the people who visit your site. Some of them engage, some of them aren't. What we're doing, eventually, uh, our AI modeling, Sort those engagement layers can tell you the people who didn't got at least our basic grade will be the unengaged, the people that have low probability to make a purchase. Those, uh, some of them got medium engagement, some higher engagement, and beneath them, the people who make a to cart, initial checkout, your very, very warm audiences. How do we do it? How Fixel works? After you have the Fixel code within your site, we build a unique predictive analytics that is dedicated for your site. Then when a user visit your site, we, we understand uh, his engagement patterns individually. Uh, combining both of them, we're giving him a score in real time that go directly to the ad platform you work with. And then this is a circle. The reason here is that, <coughs> excuse me, the reason that there is a circle here is that every 12 hours, we actually remodeling all the assumptions on the way visitors engage with your site. Because we know that the rules of yesterday aren't necessarily the rules of today. So you don't have to, uh, to say, should someone be in my site 30 seconds or 20 seconds? You don't have to make those calculations. We do it for you. Then going to the ad platforms. If you have a specific ad platform, you will need us uh, to integrate with. Don't hesitate, reach out. We will uh, give you all the support. Now, something that we saw a lot of our clients doing and are really happy with this is try to understand how Fixel uh, works within your site using Google Analytics. My recommendation is build a segment, use the segment tool create a new segment, make the, uh, do it exactly as you can see here. I will say that uh, we will send you this presentation uh, and you will have the video of uh, this webinar so you can do it uh, in your own time, step-by-step step in your office with your teams. You can choose basic, mid, high to build those three levels. Notice that you change filter users and not sessions because in many cases you want to see how does the visitors that got a fixal basic, what's happened to him in the next visit. I would also recommend you to build a segment that will include, will exclude all the users that got fixal, just choose the event category, choose fixal, and that's it. Eventually the outcome, this is an example for one of our clients, will be, you will see here, 
Uh, in this client, for example, he have 133 uh, people who visited his, his site. Fixel basic was given to 48,000, uh, Fixel medium to 38. We can see that 30% out of uh, 133, generate 99% of the conversions. Uh, almost 99. Um, so what we're doing, we're working on the predictive model. So our, our algorithm, in this case, managed to predict 99% uh, of the conversion, 48,000 out of uh, 133. All these 84,000, this is the waste. Now, after this uh, very short intro, if you have any questions, feel free to, to write them regarding how Fixel works. Now we want to go to the main dish, uh, how you can use Fixel to optimize your campaigns today. First, what I would advise you, everyone, and how many of you are working with the dynamic feeds, in Facebook or in Google, shopping campaign, Feel free to raise your hand um, if you're uh, working with them, all the dynamic ads. Um, two advice I would uh, definitely give you. One, first of all, make sure that don't work like with an offline CSV. We have a lot of problem of supply and we have a lot of problem of, um, uh, of delivery, of, uh, of quantity. Make sure you will update it if you can do it directly uh, between your e-commerce platform to the ad platform. It will be perfect. If not, work with a with the link to an online Google Sheet or Excel file. Update this one on a constant basis. The second one, <coughs> this is mainly for a top of the funnel campaigns, Google Shopping, all the other people uh, purchase behavior really different today than what was last month. Build a dedicated, I call it a Corona feed, of products that are relevant for, relevant for today. Don't waste your money on products that you see uh, the, the probability someone will buy it is so low. It doesn't worth your ad dollars. It doesn't worth all those lost clicks. Build a dedicated feed. Do it today. It will save you a lot of money not to target all your products. Now, working about your retargeting, same tips. As I said, first of all, remove all those, as we've seen in the unengaged, remove all the low quality visitors. The Facebook and Google and all the other algorithms are not built for the corona. They are calculating past behavior. And be very, very focused on what you're doing and remove all the waste from your retargeting list. When you do, after you remove it, I'll give you uh, some tips. When you're going, uh, when you want to run dynamic ads in uh, Google, Critio, uh, GDN, whatever, do it for a very, very short time, three to seven days. Most of the people don't remember what's happening, uh, the product that they seen 14 days ago. In the other hand, you can use in this day, because when you build a retargeting list upon the intent of the visitors and his familiarity with your store, um, don't go only for the 28 days. You can actually try to extend it to 60, even 90 days for, uh, distance from, I talk about the days of the, uh, the distance from visit, and go for um, a corona-related feed, go for a category with sales, with special offers, Go for this one. Um, yes, Campbell, I'm talking that for the dynamic feed, go for 3.7 dynamic, uh, dynamic product. And for the longer one, you can use even the 90 days. Go with a, like a something that is related to those, uh, to the corona to this time. By the way, it doesn't necessarily need to be like, super tied to the corona, but like, for example, people uh, are buying way more frigid, uh, frigidaires, they're buying more sport equipment for home. So it uh, definitely can go to those. You don't have to use the word corona or COVID-19. 
and build way more precise targeting according to the URL and the product set that they see in your site. It means that someone that saw a kid shoes does not have the same intent as someone who saw professional running shoes. Be way more aware of the, the category. Remember, people are going to browse more. They have time. They're going to click. You go, you're probably going to see increase in your CTRs. It doesn't work if it doesn't generate you any money. You don't need to get clicks from boring people. You want to make sales. How do you use it with Fixel? First of all, I would advise you to start normally with the Fixel medium, like we've seen in the previous example. Focus on the people with the highest intent. Don't go, uh, don't go so wide there. This is if you're doing it for all the people who visit your site. If you are using a segmentation for a URL specific segmentation, do it Fixel and this uh, segment. I will, uh, I will show you a screenshot how you can actually do it within Facebook. Lookalikes. Um, what's happening in the lookalike is very, very interesting. When we think about the seed for your lookalike, give me people who are look like this audience, we need to have, by the book, uh, three criteria. One, it needs to be over 1,000 people. I will say also less than 10,000. Second, it needs to be related to the specific category within your site. If you have one type, it's great. If you're, uh, if you're selling shoes, there is a huge difference between people who bought sport shoes, who bought uh, sneakers, who bought uh, professional running shoes or kid shoes. If you're selling, uh, if you're a car dealership, there is a huge difference between people who bought a small car to a large SUV. They have a different intent. You don't want to put every or all of them in the same list. And third, they need to be as closer to purchase. Now, if you have enough data, use it. Uh, of people, for example, who buy sport shoes or buying SUV, a uh, seven-seated car. What's happening now? This is before the coronavirus. What's happening now, actually, is something very, very interesting. The intent of the people is totally different. It means that in many cases, your uh, your list, your past purchase data, worth way less than you imagine. Why? Because for a lot of people, uh, the way they purchase sports shoes or cars or whatever is different than what they're doing today. People today, they get more stressed, they make decisions differently than what they used to do. I would advise you that the seed for the lookalike will be very fresh, seven, maximum 14 days, according to the length uh, and the impact of the coronavirus on your audience. So use way, way more people who visit your site. If you have thousands of sales uh, in a week, use only this one. Don't go too wide, too back. Okay? Use the seed for your lookalike, for people who make the decision uh, during the coronavirus. And uh, the second one is build a seed on a URL. Exactly as I said in the retargeting, someone who showed interest in sports shoes isn't the one who will show interest in kid shoes. How do you do it with Fixel? Um, if you have uh, one product, one category, and you don't have a URL based, use the Fixel High as your seed. Uh, just uh, um, Campbell, uh, today, if you have the slide, yes, I would advise you to you fix uh, Campbell ask, is it better to create a lookalike fix or high seven day versus the 14 day? Uh, the main question is the impact on the coronavirus in your location. If there is a big impact, definitely yes, and you have enough data. Um, in this example, we can see two, uh, two audiences. One will be the lookalike, um, uh, the lookalike for all the visitors. Uh, one will be uh, the lookalike, uh, sorry, the lookalike for all the people who visit the site. One will be a lookalike with Fixel High. You can see the difference here. Um, three times more purchases in a half a price per purchase. Actually, with a higher CPM, probably a higher quality 
uh, people, but way more return on uh, ad spend and way, way more uh, volume of sales. Um, how do you build the seed for the Fixel? Uh, in this case, Fixel Medium plus the, the URL. You can do it again when you want to build an audience for the retargeting. What I would advise you specifically in Facebook, when you build an audience, first of all, make sure to write, include people who meet all, not any, uh, of the following criteria. You will choose both the URL, in this example, slash sharp, slash Adidas, and the Fixel Medium event. You can do it for Fixel High, Fixel Basic, and other. Display campaign. Um, first of all, one big tip not related to Fixel, uh, mainly GDN, but can be relevant if you're buying programmatic, uh, programmatic media. Um, what I would advise you, segment your campaigns by, by news versus non-news. What happened, uh, the way people engage today, people have tons of traffic for news site, but the news site that eventually go and they will read content about the corona. The intent of a visitor when he's addressing a news site is very stressful. So you might get a lot of clicks, but I assume that uh, it will be different click than someone who's seeing um, um, a TMI website or or a finance or something. You know, finance is not a good example, or or something that he likes, science or something that he's a bit more calm. Have a bit more time. Uh, I would advise you at least test mainly of your top of the funnel and separate the campaign. One only the category for news plus all all your other. One exclude uh, the the news category plus all your other uh, audience or campaign setting. Um, look for placements when you're running display. It's very very important, especially today. Don't uh, analyze only by conversion. You analyze by the quality of the click and remove fast places uh, that are deriving you low quality. Be aware, during crisis, there is more fraud. Anyhow, people saying that 30 to 50% of the clicks is fraud. People, all the people who generate this fraud, they know that during crisis, there is less supervision on them and people are, uh, and the fraud increase. Use solution, um, such as checks, such as others, uh, in order to uh, to avoid uh, to, to avoid the fraud. Be very aware of this issue. And frequency capping, you can definitely go for way way higher capping than you used to. If you used to capping of ten, you can go to twenty. Um, if you go to, uh, by the way, you can write your all the question. I will address all of them uh, after the um, after we will finish the content part. Uh, but don't make campaigns without frequency copy. You can reach to hundreds or of impressions per users. It's very very risky. Now, how do you do it with Fixel? First of all, when you build retargeting, use the medium or the high campaign for your retargeting. Be very focused. This is in the audience level. Um, the second is you can use Fixel as a conversion event in order to analyze the quality of the clicks. And what I would advise you, you can do it using the, uh, using the tag manager, using your setting, to add Fixel as a conversion event, make sure you will remove the mark from including conversions. You, you will see it in the all conversions, but it won't uh, affect the standard uh, Google default optimization. Now, what I would do, use the Fixel medium level, and then go to the placement after you have this one and you have enough data where it showed, and then build a benchmark, what is the average a conversion rate for Fixel, or what is the cost per engaging user in uh, for a user who reached the Fixel level, and uh, and remove all the low quality places. By the way, I would advise you also to uh, check for places that have abnormous number of, of conversions 
and to see if they're fraud. <laughs> um, going into search, um, some tips. Generally, bid lower than you used to. General tip, the price is going down. You don't need to pay the CPC prices that you used to pay. In the other hand, go make way more broad or BMMA keyword. People are spending more time online. They have more time to make search, um, uh, to search, um, to search, to search for product, to search for reviews. Go way broader than you used to. Not only your brand terms, but you know, even uh, like spend time on your keyword research. Go for places that you didn't start that have enough scale one month ago. And again, as I said in the display, remove the low quality terms fast. Now, how you can you uh, do it with Fixel? Let me give you an example. If I get here, first of all, when you analyze the search term, go to the search term report. Don't go to the keyword report. Like you can see here in the previews, analyze search term, not only keywords. Now, when you have, just for example, a report like this, when you have 0 0.12 conversions, you can hardly make any decisions based on this data. Using Fixel, when you add Fixel as a conversion event, if I will give an example, this, this specific campaign have 40% engagement rate. Even though that this keyword generates you a sale, it probably won't do it uh, in the long run. And even though that the organic dog shampoos didn't generate you, giving you people who show a lot of intent and the probability they will make a purchase later, or if you bring enough volume, they will make a purchase, um, is uh, dramatically increasing. How do you use it for Fixel? First, you can edit, like we said in the display, as a conversion event within Google Ad. One more trick, you can set it as a conversion within your Google Analytics. You can set the campaign like you see here. You go to the, to the goal description, the action equal to MED. This is for Fixel Medium. So you set the, <coughs> excuse me, you set Fixel as a conversion. And eventually what you're doing, you can see a benchmark for each one of the search terms. Within, uh, within the Google account, and then you can uh, use it and um, eventually see the cost per engaging user. And one more, when you're running our LSA retargeting search campaign, build a segment for Fixel Basic and bid higher instead of all the people who visit your site. We're seeing that the unengaged have no benefit, have no value, uh, beyond the general audience. So you don't need, if you build a different creative or if you uh, bid higher on the people who was in your site, I would recommend you do it for Fixel Basic. Content. First of all, do a lot of content. People have time to do, to read more content. Uh, you can definitely go for uh, content that you didn't sought before uh, you can definitely um, you can go for content that is like 1000 word 2000 word don't be afraid of uh, publishing this content you can do it in native platforms you can go for three four five minute uh, videos in facebook and in youtube when you work in youtube i would advise you go way more for a click ads more discovery ads less the in stream the reason is a lot of people sitting, binging content uh, within YouTube. When you going, first of all, you know, a lot of them just leave the TV. So you will see your ad, though you'll get a mark, you'll get no value. And people have more intent. So you will pay more for each view. But you will get people with way higher intent uh, towards purchasing your products or services. By the way, what we're seeing here, this is an example for Tabula. Look at the green graph. Look what happened. The green graph represents the, the CPM, the cost for each, um, uh, at each exposure. It dropped by 50% within less than a month. 
and it's going to keep going down because there is way more available media and less advertisers. So use all those platforms. How you can use Fixel in those platforms? I would advise you to use Fixel both as a conversion as both as an audience. Uh, Outbrain and Tabula, both of them are offering you a retargeting solution. So build an audience using the Fixel basic instead of all the people who visit your site. And uh, especially if you have a blog content or general content area within your site, use the Fixel medium as a conversion event inside Outbrain or Tabula. Um, small tip for all the Fixel users, if you have a, a blog segment within your store, put a different Fixel segment on those pages. Don't go for the general one because we understand engagement patterns. And if you need for your packages, shoot us an email and we will uh, give you the access to one more code. So eventually you can optimize all the placement, all the tricks that we talk in the display. You can do exactly the same by each placement in Outbrain, in Tabula. You can do it for each creative and so on. Some other tips for using Fixel in your campaigns. First of all, don't overlap too much. It means I saw some advertiser running audiences both for the medium and both for the basic. Choose one level, I think it's enough. The other one, uh, I would advise you use one segment for your retargeting audience and, uh, and a higher one for the lookalike. You will need less people probably in your lookalike audiences uh, than the one in the retargeting that you do want to expand your reach. Something more, um, when you go to the dashboard under the my.fixel.ai with your own login, um, uh, you have an option to set conversion tracking. It will allow us to give you better results. Something that coming soon, uh, I will share with you here. We're building a product called Waste Report. This is a product that will go uh, as an integration towards Google Ads in the first place and it will understand the way all your uh, visitors engage with your content and give you a CSV file, both for keyword and uh, both the keyword exclusion list and both for the placement exclu the exclusion list, excuse me. All you have to do is to upload it and to remove the waste from your campaign way faster than what you're doing now. Now in the last thing before I will address the question, I want to go back to the beginning. This is hard times. And I want to say you thank you so much for trusting in what we're doing here, in what we're building here. We really appreciate uh, for, uh, you being part of uh, Fixel, and we're here to support you with any questions you have. You can talk with, uh, with me directly. This is my private email. Uh, you can talk with Elad, my Adar, my co-founders, Anything that you need, we're here to support you. Uh, you also have our documentation side. And now we'll, uh, I will address the, and this is it for the content. And I want to say you thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We have some questions. Uh, feel free to add your questions here. Now, um, Campbell asked if to build a lookalike according uh, to national. If you have different campaigns and different behaviors in specific cities or uh, dramatically, I would definitely advise you uh, to build a segment for people uh, within a specific region. It really depends on the, the way your, the, your site is structured and on the way people are buying. But, the, but generally, yes. Uh, specifically time, you can definitely combine the engagement, mainly, for example, in New York and California that are severely damaged. They might be more um, more similar, so you will still gain this 1,000 people list if you don't have them specifically for each country. And Campbell asks, what is your go-to uh, tool for cl click fraud? And first of all, we are partnering, we're working, uh, with, we're working with a lot of big brands. So we really like uh, working with Czech. We're, we're great partners with them. And uh, what we will do, uh, you talk about click fraud, 
there is actually a free tip that written by uh, Elad or CMO that give you a one, two, three tool, how you can identify uh, bot traffic. Um, I will put here the link. And this is something you can do. It costs no money. This is free. I assume it will solve some of your problems. So feel free to use it. If not, so looking like click chase, click chase like check, like others can do, uh, can help you a lot in those days. Um, the best way to choose, to check a click traffic quality, first of all, if you have enough data, then conversion. Most of the people don't have enough conversions data uh, in order to analyze. Uh, we believe that Fixel is a great solution and you can definitely use it in order to check the quality of the traffic. I, I'm really biased, but I really believe that your client, you have this tool, I would advise you to use it in addition to what you're doing today. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we do offer to help you and uh, feel free to reach out to us by email and we will discuss with you how we can help you. And if I see there aren't any other questions, I will just want to say you thank you so much for being uh, for taking the time being part of this webinar. I had a great time talking with you. And that's it and we here. Bye bye.